I would call it the weakest by far. I would even go that far. I would say weakest by far because when I say Marcus Epps is the only foundational piece, I don't, I don't even mean it in the sense that the Eagles think he's going to be their best safety. Um, I, I, I mean it in the sense that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that he's the guy that you know is going to be there. In other words, you know, Harris might be more important. Tart might be more important uh, to the defense as a whole, you know, after they beat out the other one or, you know, vice versa. But the one that you kind of know is going to be there is Marcus Epps. And a good football Friday, everybody. On time and on point, your Birds 365 Mac and Mac duo of McMullen McDonald. Got you for the next couple of hours right here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Uh, JM, are you ready for a football Friday? Uh, yeah, I think so. But from your hint before the program started, I might shift dramatically. I got to admit, Jody, oof, I'm tired of this uh, subject, uh, but well, let's yeah. dive into it. We are going to start with Jaquitsky Tart in just a second. Uh, yes, for those who send out my morning wake up call every day on the stream. Uh, yes, we started on time. And truth be told, I didn't know that was going to happen today because I actually went out last night and celebrated Father's Day. Yeah, uh, oh, my daughter. There we go. Late yes. celebration. Yeah, because my daughter got hung up on the weekend. I was busy. I had to do two shows on Sunday. So she said, You want to push it off to Thursday night? So we went out, played Quizzo. I had an Irish coffee, which I don't usually do oh, at wow. that time of night. So it was it was kind of questionable as to whether we were going to get this show off on time. But when I found out from John McMullen late yesterday afternoon that Jaquiski Tart's contract had leaked out, I said, I know what we're talking about tomorrow on Birds 365 because we've talked incessantly about Jaquiski Tart since he signed with the Philadelphia, or at least, at least details that he was going to sign with the Philadelphia Eagles came out like a week ago. It took yeah. that long for the details of his contract to get out there. Not quite the veteran minimum. So maybe we've been downplaying, or at least I'll raise my hand. No, say, we're not go. downplaying it. Uh, and, and, and by the way, let me correct. It's not out there. It's not been leaked. It's not uh, technically to my knowledge, he has not signed the contract yet. So it's going to okay. be, well, they just agreed to terms. Um, I, I was told he got a little bit more than the veteran minimum, which is kind of surprising because he signed for the veteran minimum last year with San Francisco. Um, and, you know, maybe the Eagles had some competition. Maybe somebody else was interested. They didn't want to um, sort of uh, bother with anything of that nature. But I, I think he's going to get a little bit more from what I was told. But we're talking about, you know, maybe two million dollars. Um, and you know, I was, I was, I was thinking about it yesterday, and I, I thought to myself, Eric Wilson, for some reason, because I, I, I said, oh, I wonder what Eric Wilson signed for uh, coming into the Eagles, and and, and it was one year, two point seven five million. Uh, he's not going to get that. <laughs> the, the, the point is, and, and I put Anthony Harris in this conversation as well, because that's how it is. Very similar deal is how it was described to me. And he got, he can make up to two and a half million within, uh, if, if he plays and reaches uh, all, all the aspects of his particular contract, if he's a starting player. Uh, so basically I think they're both going to get, very, very similar deals. Um, and that leads me to believe, you know, maybe it's Anthony Harris or Jaquiski Tart, not Anthony Harris and Tart. Um, but we, we've talked about that before, and I have no problem with the competition. Let the best man win. Yeah. But I, I think the other part of that, the back end of that, is Kayvon Wallace has to show up. Kayvon Wallace has to play. In, in training camp well has to show that he's heading in the right direction. The only structured piece I see at safety, and it's hard to even call him sort of foundational is Marcus Epps. They seem to really like Marcus Epps. They penciled Marcus Epps in. They expect him to be a starter. 
And then everything else is kind of up in the air. And if Marcus Epps is the main guy at safety, I'm okay with that. I, I would still call safety one of, and yeah, people have a problem with this descriptive adjective, weaker. Doesn't mean weak across the board, just weaker in comparison to the other positional groups that they have on this team. Uh, I would still call that one of their weaker positions. Yeah, it, you? It, I would call it the weakest by far. I would even go that far. I would say weakest by far because when I say Marcus Epps is the only foundational piece, I don't, I don't even mean it in the sense that the Eagles think he's going to be their best safety. Um, I, I, I mean it in the sense that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that he's the guy that you know is going to be there. In other words, you know, Harris might be more important. Tart might be more important uh, to the defense as a whole, you know, after they beat out the other one or, you know, vice versa. But the one that you kind of know is going to be there is Marcus Epps. And you can't say that about Kayvon Wallace because he can also play himself off this roster in, in training camp. Andre Sachere, look, he got benched last year. I told, I tell everybody, you know, he, he, he came in here as a early in the season as an addition and, and looked like a, a really good special teams player. And then he kind of fell off very similar to Aaron Sipos in the second half. And by the time they got late in the season, he wasn't one of their gunners anymore. They went to Josiah Scott. So, um, there, there is no sort of certainty at the safety position outside of Epps. None. You, you, you kind of know what one of, you know, the odds, and this is how I describe it. I have to be very careful because, you know, people hear what they want to hear, Jody. Oh, yeah. The odds are Harrison Tart are both here, that those odds are favorable. But there's at least a legitimate shot that neither – uh, that only one, I, I was going to say, neither. you think they cut yeah. both of them? No, that that only one is here and they cut one of them. And for people that say, no, 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 they gave Anthony Harris two and a half million dollars. We'll see what they give Tart. That's going to be the, the the ceiling, two and a half million. It's going to be somewhere in the range of two, two and a half million. And again, I bring up Eric Wilson. They brought in Eric Wilson to be a starter. And I told him from day one, it isn't going to work. That's one I can check in the box. And you know that, Jody. Yeah. They gave Eric Wilson $2.75 million. They gave him more and they cut him and they should have cut him. Right. In, and oh, by the way, the he did start. They yeah. brought him in to be a starter yeah. and he started. And they got enough of a look of a look at him to see what the holes in his games were. And he, they said, well, you know, we can actually do better with somebody off our bench. Why are we playing this guy just because we gave him contract X during the offseason? Yeah, exactly. I give credits to the Eagles for that because uh, they, they weren't afraid to move on from a player that when they got enough tape on him, saw him in their own system and said, no, this is not what we expected. We need better. They were very willing to move on from him. Yeah, but it, and you're right, and it's a, a check mark in their column. But I wouldn't give him too much credit, Jody, because right, it doesn't take be much. <laughs> yeah, it, it, because that's my point. The contract is so light, it doesn't matter. In other words, and it's not going to happen. And I hate to bring this up, and I'm not even going to bring up Reddick. I, obviously, Reddick's going to play. Signed for 15. They're not cutting Hassan Reddick. He can right. show up and be the worst football player in the history of the world, which isn't going to happen. They're not cutting him because of the contract. You can cut somebody on a $2.75 million contract. Maybe Bradbury's a better example of $10 million, one year. They're not cutting him. He's playing, period. That's what that contract tells you. Um, $2.75 million, $2.5 million, $2 million, veteran minimum. Now, nah, you can move on from him at any time. That's the only thing I'm trying to impart to the fan base. And uh, one guy who is a fan of one of the Eagle safeties is a guy who should know a little bit about Eagle safeties, and that's Malcolm Jenkins. He was on the Eagles Unfiltered podcast and had some pretty good things to say about Malcolm, that he's a really hard worker, that he likes his coverage skills, that he's a bit of a ball hawk, and you know he's going to give every uh, single ounce of effort that he has. And 
was impressed with him when he was sitting behind in Malcolm's last season here in Philadelphia behind uh, he and Rodney McLeod. Um, so if Marcus Epps is going to be the stalwart, and maybe that's a wrong word to describe it, but it's the best one I have right now, uh, of the Eagles safety position, if he's getting the thumbs up from a guy like Malcolm Jenkins, it makes me feel better about what uh, we're going to get out of Epps this year if he's going to be close to an every down player. Because last year he was a situational substitution player. He was a fill-in when guys were injured player. If he's going to be the main guy back there at safety for the Eagles, I feel more confident that Malcolm Jenkins says he's up to the task. Yeah, I have confidence in Epps because I saw him play last year. And I think I said on this show, I know I wrote it, so I'm sure I said it on this show as well, that late in the season about, you know, I'm talking probably game 12, 13, when he started playing a little bit more, I he, he was the best safety on this team last year. And I thought he was better than Harris. I thought he was better than Rodney McLeod in the time he was in there. And I was a little surprised the Eagles scaled back when they got to the playoffs and they, they started relying on the veterans a little bit more. It's sort of the nature of the football coach. They they rely on the the older guys they're they're used to a little bit too much. Uh, I was a little bit surprised Jonathan did that. Um, I thought he was the best safety on this team last year. I thought he deserved to be a starter last year. I, I certainly think he deserves to be a starter this year. And it's a little bit different. Look, nothing against Malcolm. I mean, it's just you see the same thing with coaches, and and generally players are going to defend each other, and there's going to be some hyperbole uh, mixed in there. And I, I use as an example, you know, every time the Eagles showed up before they got uh, James Bradbury, it was all, oh, Tay Gowan this, Mac McCain, Carrie Vincent this, oh, we're very Zach McPherson ready, ready to go. No, no, they didn't believe that for one second. They they believe it with with Marcus Epps, I think, or at least they believe it to a to a much 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 greater degree. No, here here's why apparently I put more stock in what Malcolm says than you do. When you're a teammate, when you're still there, when it's one of your guys that you're looking across and being asked to comment on, that's one thing. When you are not only no longer a member of the team, but you're no longer a member of the fraternity, and Malcolm Jenkins is retired, he doesn't have to sweat what uh, he says about other players anymore. He's not in the league anymore. Uh, And I always thought Malcolm was a stone-cold straight shooter. Was he going to verbally throw guys under the bus? No. But did he also just give you the pap and the standard answers and the uh, uh, player speak? No, I thought he was a a guy who was thoughtful. And uh, when he said something, I always thought he was very believable. Uh, That's why I put more... um, Grabby toss in a statement that Malcolm Jenkins would make about a uh, former teammate because he did play with Epps uh, than a lot of other players. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I mean, look, I've talked to Malcolm a lot over the years. Malcolm is very honest. Uh, and, you know, you can ask him questions about world uh, uh, views and, and much bigger issues than football. He'll give right. you a very, very thoughtful response. He, he still considers himself an eagle. Uh, and he is part of the Eagles fraternity in his mind. Uh, and he's got his guys and he's going to defend his guys. He's going to, de- now he might criticize the organization itself because of how things ended here. Um, from a business perspective, um, you know, he'll criticize Orlando Skandrick. I'll tell you that, uh, uh, with young players, he's who, very, who didn't, who uh, didn't yeah. criticize Orlando uh, Skandrick. With young players, he's very, you know, he's one of those sort of Jason Kelsey types who's going to mentor young players. Um, And he he really, really tries to advance them. He really, really tries to bring them along. It's it's one of those things that you, you and I have talked about that, mainly with the quarterback position. There's certain quarterbacks that Aaron Rodgers, I'm looking at you, uh, you don't want anything to do with guys who are supposed to replace them or at least projected to replace them at some point and shouldn't be, which Aaron's right in that case. But, um, 
There are certain players, Kelsey being one of them. Malcolm's in that category as well. They really enjoy it. And 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 that, that and I'm not saying by any stretch that Malcolm doesn't like Marcus Epps. I just put more stock on what he did on the field. And what he did on the field, if people didn't notice, was was pretty good last year, Marcus Epps. And I will uh, say this for the Epps fans out there, the Jaquiski Tart fans out there, the ever-growing Jaquiski Tart fan club, uh, and or the Anthony Harris fan club. Um, I've had this question written down for three or four straight days, and I've just not gotten to it um, because you need uh, to, to put it in its proper context, um, looking ahead uh, for the Eagles in 2023. The Eagles have two first-round draft picks right now. Um, the consensus would be that if Jalen Hurts doesn't have a improved year, probably much improved year, the Eagles might look to draft a different quarterback uh, next year. And they've got some resources that would put them in position to do so, maybe even very high in the draft. But if Jalen Hurts comes out and balls out and plays well and we're all feeling good about him and we think the Eagles are leaning toward giving him a contract extension, the Eagles are going to have two first-round draft picks to just build up the team that we're not going to have to worry about them moving up to take a quarterback I'll tell you right now, that will be one of the positions they will look at is safety. That well, they've they, never drafted a safety in the first round, Jody. You're you're hearing it from me now. Now, uh, again, you got to make sure that people hear what you're saying. If they're not in play for a quarterback, which we're all rooting for that to be the case, that Jalen Hurts takes a major step up in his progression this year. If not, safety will be a position they will look at because – you and I have talked about this a lot. Jonathan Gannon came from a place where he had one of the best safeties in the National Football League in position to add to his defense, to be able to do the things that he wanted to do. Malcolm uh, Malcolm Jenkins type player, but he was even a different player when he was here. Marcus Epps is not that player. Anthony Harris is not that player. I would doubt highly that uh, anyone on their roster – uh, Jim no. Christie Tart or anyone else no. is that type of player. Oh, they still are looking for that type of player that fills several different roles, can play all over the place, tremendously athletic safety to back end the entire defense to allow the DC to do what he wants to in a lot of different ways and phases. Oh, no, they're still looking for that player. And if they've got the flexibility of using those first round draft picks on anything other than a quarterback, well, I'll ask you. I'm making a question. Uh, Jalen uh, Hurts actually earns a Pro Bowl slot. He is one of the three best quarterbacks in the – and not the fourth replacement because that can happen from time to time. You can get <laughs> yeah, that's what happened last year. It was the third alternate. <laughs> right. You can get pretty damn deep on the Pro Bowl. I'm not talking about alternate. I'm talking about he earns one of the three actual spots on the Pro Bowl. What position Eagles using those two first round draft picks on? Well, so many moving parts, Jody. But number one, what you said, what you said is true about Jonathan Gannon. I've talked about it all the time. He constantly brings up Harrison Smith in conversation too, you know, too often. It's one of those things um, uh, because he liked him so much as a player. But you know, is he even going to be here? Um, you know, if the Eagles defense succeeds, he's probably going to be a head coach, to be honest. Um, and if they don't succeed and they crap the bed, the Eagles could start looking around and saying, what the heck's going on here? So that that's the biggest piece of the puzzle. But then you have, you know, your favorite, Derek Barnett's essentially under a one-year deal, even though it was said it's a two-year deal. The Eagles can get out of it. Brandon Graham is already talking about here on Jacob Sports, jacobsports.com. You know, he's he'll... He wants to play 15 years and he wants to finish his career with the Eagles. But he also said, guess what? I'll go play somewhere else next year. Yeah, if the did. Eagles don't want me, I'll go play somewhere else. And that's, to be honest, that's likely what's going to happen. So they could need an edge rusher, which is an even more important position. And then you talk about Brad. We talked about Bradbury. One year deal, Jody. They might need a corner. And Darius Slay's post 30 as well. There's so many moving parts. And there are there are positions with more value that the Eagles could be looking at uh, next next April that could be just 
more important than a position. They've never used a first round pick. So we'll get into that next year. We'll be talking about linebackers. We'll be talking about safeties. But, you know, Howie isn't responsible for all of that. Jeffrey Glory isn't responsible for all of that. But, hey, Jeffrey's been here for over a quarter century now, and they still aren't taking stinking safeties at the top of the draft. All right. Um, I remember circle this date on your calendar. Jody Mack said that uh, if they don't need to use their draft capital to get themselves a quarterback in the 2023 draft, safety will be now. How he could do the old kick the can down the road thing again and uh, give himself another year uh, to have uh, multiple draft picks in the first round. So he could trade out. But if the Eagles make two pair, I got a lot of contingencies. To this yeah, stance. you got. And by the way, uh, I hope I, I don't see a better safety prospect than Kyle Hamilton this year. And they could have had Kyle Hamilton, but they went in a different direction. Yeah, but you they know thought. they you know they love Davis. I know if they there was it. any other if there was any other players other than Davis on the board, they're 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 sitting right where they are. Uh, thinking, Kyle, maybe I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this team. Okay. They did love Davis. They valued that position right. more. And that's why they did what they did. All right. So here are the contingencies. <laughs> they don't need a quarterback. JG is still here as the defensive coordinator. They keep both first round picks. If those three things are in place, the Eagles will take a first round safety next year. Jody McDonald, Nostradamus, write it down. Yours truly laying it out there in mid-June some 10 months before the draft ever rolls around. All right, we've got our own Nostradamus joining us next. He is Mr. Football Friday himself. Game day, Ed Kratz up with us here on Birds 365.